my Lord Inquisitor. Greetings from the librariums of the Logos Historica Vertia. I was somewhat surprised, but nonetheless quite happy to have received your communication and the request for the appended record. It is not every day one receives such a request, and I am quite pleased to know that my previous record, that one committed to your archives, stood the test of time, and indeed prompted you to request I record another. I trust that your rest shall see you to good health and further studies. Your servant, as always, Oculus Imperia. In late M38, an Adeptus Mechanicus exploratory team would discover a strange construct floating within the depths of wilderness space. What this object truly was, none can say with any degree of certainty, as a number of contradictory reports have surfaced concerning its true nature. Some would claim that this construct was merely a fused amalgamation of starships known as a space hulk, while others maintain that it was, in fact, a colossal Xenos artifact of unknown origin with an appearance reminiscent of a sarcophagus. Regardless as to what exactly this object was, the tech priests would bring this edifice to the asteroid of Scopios, which served as both a research and containment facility of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Shortly after the recovery of this object, astropaths from a number of neighboring sectors would begin to suffer from nightmarish visions, with their various communiques being rife with ill omens and prophecies of impending doom. Soon after this, all contact with the Scopios facility would be lost. After a routine patrol from the Imperial Navy attempted and failed to establish communication with the facility, the 22nd Elysian Drop Troop Regiment of the Astra Militarum would be dispatched, in order to determine the reason behind the facility's silence, due to the world of Elysia being less than a week's journey from the facility. Colonel Prinz, the commander of the Elysian forces, would proceed with caution and dispatch several reconnaissance companies, along with a number of ground observation officers from the Imperial Navy itself, to scout ahead and acquire intel in order to determine the hostility of the situation. Initial reports would indicate that, despite the facility's machinery being fully operational and working at full capacity, Scopios was utterly deserted. However, as the Elysians proceeded deeper into the facility, contact with an unknown enemy would be made, although every squad that came into conflict with this mysterious foe would also soon fall silent, leading to Prinz assuming that his men were being slaughtered by this newly encountered threat. While the reports regarding just what sort of foe had been encountered were sporadic and unclear, were that the enemy was humanoid, incredibly fast and exceptionally powerful. Suspecting his men had encountered Drukhari raiders or Eldari corsairs, Prinz would order the entirety of his forces to prepare for immediate drop deployment. The two surviving recon companies, meanwhile, would make their way to the primary manufactorum located at Scopios's North Pole. It was here that Captain Schultz of the Third Recon Company would report to Prinz of the grotesque discovery that he and his men had made. The facility's assembly lines had been drastically altered by some unknown force, transforming them into something utterly unrecognizable to the naval tech priests that were accompanying the recon squads. The Manufactoria of Scopios were in the midst of constructing what appeared to be statues of human skeletons. Upon closer inspection, it would be revealed that these supposed statues were, in actuality, robotic constructs that were designed to serve as warriors. Thousands of these constructs had already been assembled, but thankfully remained inert for the time being. Prinz would order for the recon companies to locate the primary control center and shut the entire facility down, before adding that should any threats be encountered, they were to call for immediate reinforcement. As the recon companies began encountering more of these mysterious adversaries, the fleet's astropaths, half insane with terror, would inform Prinz that they had detected something ancient and evil upon the surface of Scopios, although as to what they had discovered, it could not be determined. The colonel then ordered for a full-scale assault at the facility, instructing his men to destroy everything in their path. As Prinz led his men into the control center, he would discover that the recon companies had mysteriously vanished, without a trace. 
It was soon after this that the Elysians would discover the massive Xenos edifice that had been retrieved by the Adeptus Mechanicus, with the interior of which beginning to emit a blinding light that was silhouetting a mysterious figure. This figure, which was described as sporting a lithe, almost skeletal appearance, would launch itself at the Elysians, swiftly tearing through the guardsmen with terrifying ease. With the appearance of this creature, the artificial warriors that had been lying dormant would activate, leading to a fierce firefight between the Elysians and the skeletal constructs. Eventually, the colonel would order a retreat, while simultaneously requesting for the fleet in orbit to subject the facility to an orbital bombardment. As the drop troops made it off-world, the fleet's guns would succeed in obliterating the entire Scopios asteroid. While the mysterious constructs and the Xenos artifacts upon Scopios were presumed to have been destroyed, the Inquisition would implement a strict quarantine throughout the surrounding region of space, with it officially being declared as Purgatus. The identity of the mysterious foes that the Elysians had encountered remains, to this day, unconfirmed within Imperial records. Just who, or what, could have been behind the events of the Scopios incident? The most commonly accepted belief is that the skeletal constructs discovered by the Elysians were none other than Necron warriors. This would certainly appear to be the most likely possibility, due to a large number of factors. For starters, the average Necron warrior sports an appearance that is akin to a robotic skeleton, one that is very least superficially similar to that of a human, very much like those displayed by the constructs that were encountered upon Scopios. Secondly, according to the Armageddon 3 website, the artificial warriors faced by the Elysians were described as wielding weaponry that emitted blasts of energy that disintegrated everything they struck. This description is highly similar, if not outright identical, to the signature Gauss weaponry of the Necron race, which emits blasts of intense magnetic energy that rapidly breaks down the molecular structure of their target, allowing it to bypass even the heaviest of armor and vaporize the warrior beneath. Because of it, it is even theoretically possible that if these artificial warriors were indeed the Necrons, then there is a likelihood that the tech priests and civilian workers throughout the Scopios incident may have been in fact forced to undergo the biotransference process, converting them into Necron warriors, with the facility itself having been altered into what was effectively a Necron bioforge. This wouldn't be entirely out of the realm of possibility, as within the 3rd edition Necron Codex, the constructs known as pariahs were themselves stated to be humans that had been forced to undergo the biotransference process, due to these particular humans bearing the genetic trait known as the pariah gene, which the Necron sought to weaponize. This, in turn, would also heavily imply that the mysterious entity which had emerged from the heart of the Xenos structure could have been a Catan shard. Following the events of the War in Heaven, primeval conflict waged between the Necron tier Empire and the Old Ones, the Necrons would turn upon their Catan masters, shattering their physical forms into countless fragments and shards. Many of these shards would then go on to be entombed within structures known as Tesseract Vaults, which serve as both prison and tools to contain and harness their near godlike power. With this in mind, it's certainly a distinct possibility that the object recovered by the Adeptus Mechanicus could have been one of those vaults, and that the tech priests, overcome by their curiosity, may have deactivated the various wards that contained the shard within, inadvertently releasing it and allowing the creature to cut a swathe of destruction through the Scopios facility. However, if the creature encountered by the Elysians was truly a Catan shard, then it remains unclear as to which of the Catan in particular this shard may have originated from, due to its near skeletal form and lack of weaponry, ruling out the possibility of it being a fragment of the entities known as the Deceiver, or the Nightbringer. In addition, it is stated that the Catan themselves did indeed hold the secrets of biotransference, even though they themselves may have lacked the technological capabilities to construct the necessary bioforges. This is reaffirmed within the 8th edition Necron Codex, as it would be the Catan known as the Deceiver who would plant the idea of biotransference within the minds of the Necron tier, so that that race would be the one to suggest such a process to the Catan. While the possibility that a Catan shard and a number of Necron warriors were responsible for the Scopios incident are indeed incredibly high, 
there do exist a number of potential flaws with this particular hypothesis. The first of these factors is that the initial foe encountered by the Elysian recon teams was reported to be incredibly fast. The forces of the Necrontier are known for their slow, implacable advance upon the battlefield, with only their less humanoid units, such as destroyers or wraiths, displaying any form of swiftness. However, this potential argument can in itself be debunked by the fact that the entity that had emerged from the edifice was also described as being humanoid and fast, indicating that this creature was the one that had initially engaged the Elysians in battle, as opposed to the skeletal constructs. The second potential argument against the aforementioned Necron hypothesis is that the events of the Scopios incident took place in M38, whilst the Imperium would not fully acknowledge the Necrons until M41 with the Necron Raid on the Adeptus Sororitas Convent of Sanctuary 101. That being said, however, it is still completely possible for the events of the Scopios Incident to have been an unofficial encounter with the Necrons, due to the facility being destroyed and the surrounding regions of space being subsequently quarantined. Because of this lockdown, the tech priests of the Adeptus Mechanicus would never have been fully able to catalogue the remains of the beings responsible for the conflict. The final major argument against the possibility that the Scopios incident was a result of Catan and Necron influence is the fact that the Manufactoria upon Scopios were somehow corrupted. While the Catan did indeed have the necessary knowledge in regards to biotransference, as stated earlier, it is heavily implied that the technology required for such a process was developed by the Necron tier themselves. This is supported within the 8th edition Necron Codex, which states outright that while the Catan provided all the necessary knowledge regarding biotransference, it would be the cryptech known as Illuminor Seras who would make the concept a reality. That being said, however, since the Catan had abilities which allowed them to defy the very laws of physics and reality, then if a powerful enough shard was freed from its imprisonment within a tesseract vault, it would be then, theoretically possible, that such a being would have used their mastery over the physical realm to simply convert the Scopian Manufactoria into makeshift bioforges. But, if the beings behind the events of the Scopios incident were not Necron or Catan in origin, then just who or what could have caused the series of events? One possibility is that the object recovered by the Adeptus Mechanicus could have been chaotic in origin perhaps serving as a prison for a powerful demonic entity, such as a demon prince. Such a being could certainly prove to be a deadly foe to any who would encounter it, and while no two demon princes are exactly alike, they do tend to be far swifter and more powerful than a typical human, with many being more than capable of tearing their way through wave after wave of foes with their bare hands. The energies of Chaos are well known for their corrupting influence, with such examples of chaotic taint being known to radically alter the appearance or function of many items, such as by transforming inanimate objects into grotesque amalgamations of flesh and steel, or even by granting such abhorrent creatures animus. Indeed, there would appear to be no limit as to what can be corrupted by the energies of chaos, Everything from living organisms, vehicles, titans, and even Necron tomb complexes in rare circumstances have all been shown to be susceptible to the taint of the warp. Since the Manufactoria on Scopios were described as being horrifically transformed and altered into something completely unrecognizable to the naval tech priests, then it is indeed theoretically possible that these changes were as the result of their prolonged exposure to the powers of chaos. If this were indeed the case, and the artificial warriors could have either been demonic constructs, or, given their skeletal appearance, something akin to chaos androids. However, this would fail to explain as to how the weapons of such constructs were able to disintegrate all that they struck, although it is possible that this could have been the result of them unleashing blasts of pure, concentrated warp energy. What further reinforces the possibility of the object recovered by the Adeptus Mechanicus as being chaotic in origin is due to the events that had transpired prior to all contact with the Scopios facility becoming lost. As mentioned earlier, shortly after this unknown artifact was towed to Scopios, astropaths throughout the neighboring sectors of space began to suffer horrific visions and nightmares, featuring all sorts of images of blood and screaming faces. Such psychic visions are indeed synonymous with impending demonic incursions, due to how tumultuous the energies of the warp become prior to such events occurring. 
The fact that the Inquisition would implement a quarantine zone throughout the surrounding regions of space, following the destruction of the Scopius facility, would also appear to support such a possibility, as many worlds that are exposed to demonic entities will often be scoured of all life before being declared purgatus, and all records regarding the events that had transpired being deleted or heavily redacted to place the blame upon another faction entirely. Regardless as to whether the Scopios incident was caused by the Necrons or the forces of Chaos, few can deny the impact that such an event had on the forces of Elysia. What do you think? Leave a comment below, and as ever, thanks for watching. Ave Imperator, Gloria, in Excelsis Terra.